Hello everybody, welcome to another vlog. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure how long this will be, it might not be very long, it might be a little bit long, so just a little warning that, and also what this vlog contain, it will entail, um, it's not going to be a rosy vlog, let's just put it that way, um, <laughs> most of the vlogs that I make Unfortunately, that is rosy, especially during this situation that we are all living in at the minute. But, um, no, I wanted to talk to the camera. Um, and just how I'm feeling today. Um, I'm not feeling depressed. Um, I haven't had any issues with my anxiety or anything like that. It's got nothing to do with that. Actually, the last couple of days, to be honest, has actually been a bit of an improvement, to be honest. Um, I know this might sound really daft. I mean, I have... I've had... I have drank coffee in the past, but it has actually been a while since I actually decided to, you know, make myself a cup of, cup of coffee uh, before I started work. And... I've done that. I've had a cup of coffee uh, yesterday and today. Um, yesterday was the first time in. <sighs> Could be quite a while, actually. Um, I usually drink tea more than coffee. Um, but yeah, it's been a while since I drank an actual cup of coffee. And I thought, you know what? On a whim, I'll just make myself a cup of coffee just to wake myself up a bit. And. Yesterday went went by quite well. Um, I seemed a lot more alert. I seemed a hell of a lot more... I don't know. I just felt better. I don't know what it was. It just seemed to uplift me in more ways than one. Than, you know, than the obvious. Because I've another caffeine in it. It does uplift your you know, energy and that. But... Um, but no, it, it seemed to, uh, no, I seem to even be a bit more talkative to my colleagues as well. So it seemed to help me out in other ways. And I did the same this morning. I had a cup of coffee before I started work. Um, and today I wasn't too bad either, really. But yeah, so I might start doing that just before work. I might start making myself a cup of coffee if it is making me feel a bit better while I'm at work. Um, so we'll just see how it goes. But the whole idea of making this, and I apologise to everyone watching because everybody are having problems of their own. And whenever I seem to make a vlog, I always seem to divert to some sort of feeling that I'm currently going through at the moment. And many of you already know about what's happened in the past, what's happened to me. With losing my mom and everything, and I just wanted today. I've been feeling a bit reflective, if I can call it that. Um, I was having a. Conf I'm not going to disclose this colleague's name because I don't have the right to, and I don't want to. Because end of the day, she told me this in her in confidence, but. Um, I was talking to a colleague at work today on my break that she just basically got some horrible news that um, her dad just been diagnosed with leukemia, a type of leukemia cancer. And she said that, you know, it knocked her for shit, which it will. I can completely understand that. And she was talking to me that her mum died of cancer and she died relatively pretty quickly after being diagnosed and now her dad's now got leukemia and obviously she's worried and I completely understand that because nobody wants to hear that C word ever in their lives and whenever it does happen it's probably the most devastating news you could ever receive um, but with doing that, I also spoke about my mum as well. With having my mum didn't have cancer, but she had IPF, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Now I've spoken about this before, but just in layman terms, just in case anyone hasn't seen that past vlog I did, 
where I spoke about it. What what is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis? Well, the the term idiopathic means they don't know what the cause of it was, how it developed, why it developed. That's why it's called idiopathic. But pulmonary fibrosis is a terminal disease. In my mum's terms, idiopathic or IPF is a terminal disease. Uh, it's basically a disease that attacks the lungs and it causes stiffening of the lungs and it causes over time uh, the person suffers from issues with breathing, keeping, you know, able to, you know, keep breath. Uh, and, but my mum, she got pneumonia and that's what actually caused her to deteriorate pretty rapidly and that's what caused her to pass away in the end. She had IPF but she actually was, di when she got diagnosed she, were told, she was told she could live for as long as 10 maybe more years but because she got pneumonia that just completely, because once you get pneumonia when you've got IPF or any sort of really bad lung problem it is terminal because they can't really do much for you. So that's what my mum ultimately did pass away from uh, was pneumonia because of her having IPF but um, so yeah I was talking to my colleague today talking about how my mum passed away and she was talking about how devastating it is and how hard it is to come to terms with such a thing when someone does pass away and when you get those that horrible news that you get from these situations and since getting home from work, I was thinking about her, what she was saying, I was thinking about my mum. And for the first time in probably over a year now, I actually had a moment. You know, I actually had a bit of a teary moment. And throughout this whole situation, it's been three years now. It's three years this month. I think it's near the end of this month. I think it's about the 25th or something like that, I think it is, that my mum passed away. So it's a year, three years this month she's passed. Or she passed, should I say. And... Yeah, it's the first time in probably over a year where I felt teary you know teary about it I mean obviously there's nothing wrong with that at all <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong to kind of feel it from time to time um, but I don't know whether I'm finally coming out of the idea of maybe I'm finally coming to terms with it Um finally coming to terms with she's no longer here and I'll probably never see her again until probably ultimately I maybe pass away, I don't know but I don't know how it all works <laughs> um, nobody does until their time comes I suppose um, but no Just, you know, I think I'm finally maybe coming to terms with it because I was in really deep denial right up until the point of, right from when she finally first passed away, I I was in absolute deep shock. To the point where I probably, to other people, I looked like I didn't give a shit. But inside, I was as numb. Uh, I've never experienced such a, a feeling in my life up to that point. And seeing my mum laid there, it was, you know. I never went to see her as well when she was in the Chapel of Rest. And it is something I ultimately regret not doing um, so I do feel a little bit of guilt 
from that side of things. Um, sorry about that. I had something in the oven and I had a timer on and it just just went off. <laughs> um, so like I was saying, so yeah, uh, I have a bit of a guilt from that side of things. Um, we've not going to see her when she was in Chapel of Rest and there was other things, uh, something else that happened after she died like a complication, a communication issue between the hospital and the funeral directors, which I'm not going to really say too much on that, but that was stressful. And it was quite a, um, <clears throat> it was quite a duration of time from when she passed to the funeral. It was probably over a month, about maybe four or five weeks, from her passing away to her actually being finally laid to rest. Well, you know, we scattered her out where she's, you know, in, in ashes. But, um, so that was the most stressful period as well. But I feel, now that I'm able to talk openly about what happened, much more than I was before, I feel maybe I'm finally coming to terms with it um, no longer in denial because I, I was for maybe a good two years after she passed away I was I was in this point where I thought she's not really gone she's going to walk through that door any time but obviously she wasn't you know um, so yeah that's the kind of feeling I'm feeling I know that's very solemn very <laughs> horrible thing for someone to like watch this video and it's not something you really want to talk openly about with people like other people because it's none of their business but at the same time that's the whole idea of me of me making this channel was to talk about things that's happened in my life I mean of course I'm not talking about everything that happened because everything is private and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, disclose everything that actually happened but I don't know, maybe with me now f openly talking about my mum and maybe I'm finally at that point where I've, I've accepted the fact she's no longer here. I don't think it's closure. I don't really see it as closure because it's never closure when someone passes away because if they're somebody as special as a parent, grandparent, whoever it may be, it doesn't matter. If that person was special to you, you will never forget them. And closure, I mean, I know the, the whole idea of the word closure doesn't mean closure, closure, you're never going to think about, about them again. It means closure is finally acceptance, it's acceptance and being able to move forward. Um, you could call it closure if you want to, if you want to put it in that kind of term, but I don't see it as that. I see it as except well it's the same thing acceptance but um but yeah that's how I'm feeling today um you know I found you know I just got in from work had a shower come downstairs put a pie in the oven so I'm gonna have a little bit of it now for breakfast and a bit later on for my tea and I just thought, you know, I just finally sat down after getting, after doing my shift and first time sitting down all day. And I just started to have a bit of a teary moment. And it all started coming back to me, thinking about my mom. And I was listening to a bit of music as well. And there was a song uh, by a band called uh, Eskimo Callboy. You don't know if anybody's heard of them before, but they're pretty awesome. I've just discovered them pretty recently. And... Um, there's a song I just listened to for the first time called Supernova and the lyrics resonated with me a little bit because the the lyrics sounded like it was so other maybe I don't know it could have been about a breakup I don't know or someone that person or somebody you know another person maybe passed away I don't know but it doesn't really matter the, the lyrics kind of had that feeling where you know you are my supernova you are a part of me 
that kind of thing. It was kind of, it kind of felt, you know, the lyrics kind of worked for how I was feeling. So I thought, you know what, sorry, I'm going to make a vlog. I just talk about it. Um, and get it off my chest in a way. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's the vlog. <clears throat> that's the vlog. Um, don't worry about me, anyone. You know, if anyone watching this thinking, oh, you know, John's just made a really thingy video. I feel sorry for him, and you don't feel sorry for me. You don't have to feel sorry for me. You don't have to feel. You don't have to, you know, feel you have to be put out to reach out to me in some way to try and say, oh, you know, stiff up a lip or whatever kind of thing. But um, <clears throat> you don't have to do anything like that. It, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this vlog for attention at all. I'm doing it for. My own, in my own way, I, I like to I like to talk about things. I like to talk to the camera and express how I'm feeling at that moment in time. Uh, I know it's nobody else's business, but that's the whole. That's what the whole idea of me making this channel in the first place was for me to feel that I can openly express things. You know, things that I enjoy. Maybe you know, traveling, um, other things like that. Anything that I can bring people into and also talk about things openly in my personal life to an extent um so that's the idea of it so thank you anyways for watching i apologize again <laughs> to anyone that watched this and was like i was having a good day now i feel shit i, <laughs> I apologize for that but no uh but yeah that's the vlog so thank you for watching i'm gonna get my pie out of the oven now because uh and I am hungry now, so I'm going to get something to eat. But uh, thank you for watching. Thank you again for the support that I've had since my mum passing away. I know I've already said thank you to many people, you know, right back then. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, so yeah, thanks again. See you soon. And stay safe.